What's up guys, my name's Brandon and today Apple released iOS 16.6 to the general public a little over a month after the release of 16.5.1. Along with this release, we also got iPadOS 16.6, macOS 13.5, watchOS 9.6, tvOS 16.6, HomePod OS 16.6 and iOS 15.7.8 for older devices not supported with iOS 16. Taking a look at the size of this update, if you're on 16.5.1, your update size should be under one gigabyte. Now, if you're on a beta of 16.6 or earlier, you will see a multi gigabyte update because you are going from a beta to a final. We do have a new build number for 16.6. So if we go into our settings, we can see that the new build number is is 20G75. And if we go back to the about section, you will notice that the modem firmware is now 3.80.01. And of course, that modem firmware version will vary based on your device, but you can see all of them to my right. All right, so now what's new here in iOS 16.6? And the first thing is inside of the Apple News application. So if you go into News and then go down to the Sports tab, and if you find a scorecard like this one right here, or if you go up to the menu and go to MLB, for example, if we haptic press on one of these scorecards, we have a new share game option. So before on 16.5.1 on my left, I do the same thing and we do not have the share game option. Now that was there up in the top right if you go into the menu in the game, but it was not there from the main MLB section in this example. And it's the same if you tap on the three dots right here, we have share game on 16.6, but not on 16.5.1. And speaking of MLB, if you update your iPhone to 16.6 and your Apple TV to tvOS 16.6, you will notice a new starting pitcher stat that's been added. If we head into our settings and go to general about and then to coverage, at the bottom, we have shorter verbiage. So this has changed. We have 16.5.1 on the left, 16.6 on the right, and now says coverage is only shown for this iPhone and select Bluetooth paired devices. For a full list of your devices, go to Apple support. Hebrew support has been added for Siri on the HomePod. So once you update your iPhone and your HomePod to the latest 16.6, you will notice that there is now support for the Hebrew language. This update also includes a new security prompt for iCloud for Windows. So if your iPhone and Windows computer are not on the same Wi-Fi network, your iPhone is going to show a new prompt when trying to sign in to iCloud for Windows with a verification code. We also have a lot of code changes in this update and pretty much the majority of changes are behind the scenes and on the back end in the code. So we have a lot of changes in the wallet app specifically, a lot of code changes and just minor verbiage changes. We also have the same you know, code changes with the home application. One is related to check-in and another is related to matter accessories, along with recommendations to update to home architecture if you've not done so already. We also have support added for the new MacBook Air, Mac Studio, and Mac Pro when seeing them on the network. After updating to 16.6, you might also notice that Apple Pay Later might be available to you. So you can see I have early access now, whereas I did not get that before. So I'm not sure if it's a coincidence because Apple is doing a kind of staggered, kind of a slow rollout for Apple Pay Later, which is where you can pay for purchases over time without paying any interest. So you might see that, just check your wallet application after updating and you can sign up for that here. There's also some new recovery key prompts. So if you have a recovery key set up on your device, on your Apple ID as a form of two-factor authentication, there are three new prompts. So enter recovery key later, don't have recovery key and try again later. Those have all been added in the code related to recovery key. And if we take a look at the release notes for 16.6, we only have two things mentioned here. So we do have a resolved issue related to home. So it says pairing the first matter accessory in a new home will fail when paired by selecting the accessory from the nearby accessories list. So that has been fixed in this update. However, we do still have a known issue related to Xcode here. And perhaps the biggest question mark with 16.6 is that we do not have contact key verification for iMessage. So this is a feature that was hinted at in an early beta of 16.6. It was actually inside of the settings, but we cannot access that part of the menu, but we are not seeing that with 16.6 just yet. However, that has been added in the code. So we might see contact key verification come later on 16.6. Now, as far as the performance and battery life goes, performance is just fine. I mean, I really didn't notice a big difference going from 16.6 
25.1 to 16.6. So you can see this is the Geekbench score that I scored here on my iPhone 12 Pro Max. Pretty solid score. It is slightly higher than 16.5.1, but I would not expect a major change in terms of performance. Everything seems to be pretty smooth, really no issues so far. And as far as the battery life goes, I would also not expect a major change to the battery life. We're reaching the end of iOS 16. This is one of the last versions that we're going to see. It's not the last one, but it's close. So I would not expect any major changes to the battery life. I feel like Apple is pretty much done tweaking the battery on iOS 16 as they focus on iOS 17. So if you're having battery drain, you might want to check out how you're using your phone because that may be to blame and not the software. So you might also try updating to iOS 17 after trying out 16.6 to see if that solves it. But so far, battery life performance feels about the same as 16.5.1. So with that being said, should you update to iOS 16.6? And I would say absolutely. There's really no reason not to update to 16.6 if you're already this deep into iOS 16. If you've still not jumped onto the iOS 17 beta train, you might as well update because you have a few bug fixes, some minor changes, you know, but most importantly, you do have security patches as well. So the security updates are always a big reason to update. Even if you did the rapid security response updates on 16.5.1, it's still always a good idea to update for that reason reason, especially for bugs that, you know, you may not have heard about, you may not have gotten through the rapid security response update. So keep that in mind. And I would recommend updating for all users that are on iOS 16. So with that being said, what should we expect next from Apple? So if you're on iOS 16, you're probably going to be on iOS 16.6 for quite a while because I would not expect Apple to release a 16.7 until potentially September. That's what Apple did last year with iOS 15.7. They released it in September around the time that iOS 16 was releasing. So we might see the same this year. So, you know, don't plan on getting an update at any point in August as, as far as a major point update you might get a rapid security response update or a 16.6.1 potentially, but don't expect a 16.7 until sometime in September if history is any indication and Apple follows their past trends. Now, as far as iOS 17, that public release will also be coming in September. So that's going to be coming out on the time on or around the time of the new iPhone 15 launch. Those usually launch around the same time. So I would expect to see that sometime in late September, potentially even early October, depending on what Apple does this year. So there you have it. That is iOS 16.6, a relatively minor update, but that's expected at this point in the iOS 16 lifecycle. Apple's main focus, all their manpower is going towards iOS 17. So I don't think anybody was really expecting a big update here. But nonetheless, if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe for more iOS 16 and mostly iOS 17 coverage. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.